नेक्स्ट इज परफॉर्मेंस parameters so there are certain parameters based on which we measure the performance of any regulator whether it's a switching or or a linear so the first one is obviously efficiency which is measured by this formula p out over p in where p out is total output power total input power okay so your p in is nothing but p out plus p loss so let's say if i don't know p in but i know the efficiency i can still calculate the loss so so i can write this p out over this implies p loss equal to p out करेक्ट एंड वेन वंस आई नो द पी लॉस आई कैन डायरेक्टली कैलकुलेट पी इन सिंपली बाय एडिंग पी लॉस इन टू पी आउट सो यू डोंट नीड टू नो बोथ इन ऑर्डर टू कैलकुलेट द फीस यू कैन यू कैन आदर मेजर पी इन और पी आउट एंड कैलकुलेट द एफिशियंसी इफ आई नो पी इन देन माई फॉर्मूला विल चेंज so i can write p out as p in minus p loss over p in and this will become 1 minus p loss over p in now my p loss will become uh in this case 1 minus eta into pin correct so in most of the cases uh, the p out is known so this is most frequently used formula in order to calculate the uh, efficiency and that's what we did here actually so we know the output power and how much loss based on efficiency we know 90% and we can directly calculate the input power and that's what we did in order to calculate p in here so if efficiency curve in most of the cases is measured with load current so depending upon the type of regulator you are using uh, in case of switching regu regulator it's mostly looks like this Uh, at light load it will peak in some mid range and as you keep increasing the load current your i square r losses will increase so efficiency will keep dropping so you get maximum efficiency here at this load and at light load and uh, higher load it may uh, reduce so it will peak uh, in certain range of the load a uh, load current and most of the cases we target this uh, max efficiency of 90% or above in switching regulator in linear regulator your efficiency curve may be a different uh, most of the cases it may be shifted down uh, uh, based on your dropout voltage or it may go even higher than linear regulator if dropout voltage is very less so let's say uh, i want to generate uh, 1.8 volt and my input is 1.85 so 50 millivolt is the drop so 1.8 divided by 1.85 it will give me 97.3% which is very high 
it's almost impossible to achieve this switching regulator in that case. Then second one is your uh, load regulation. So load regulation is measured as change in output voltage with respect to change in load current. So, if I say delta V out is the change in output voltage and delta I load is the change in load current. So, and I load is I know it is nothing but output current. So, and this is nothing but output resistance in a small signal. So, so you can say it is a volt per amp or ohms. Most of the cases we say like uh, because it is order of millivolt roughly. So, we say mi uh, this millivolt per amp or, or something that is how we we define this uh, load regulation. So, we do not want my output to um, I mean to change when load is changing. So, ideally I want R out to be 0 and that is why we say like ideal supply has a 0 output impedance that is what it means because it will give you a constant voltage across any load current. So, this is your ideal, this is your V out, but in reality it would not be like this, maybe something like this. And if let us say, okay, let me change the color so that it looks better, okay. So, if this is delta V out and let us say this is going from 0 to I load max, I load max, then road load regulation is delta V out over I load max. So, if let us say I load max is 1 amp and this maximum delta V out or deviation we see let us say 10 millivolt. So, we can say 10 millivolt per amp is my load regulation. <coughs> and which is nothing but we will say that your output impedance is 10 milli ohm you can say that also. So, third one is line regulation. So, line is nothing but input voltage V in. So, we define it delta V out over delta V in which means change in output voltage with respect to change in uh, input voltage. Okay. So, this now becomes V in and this becomes V out. So, this is my ideal. In practical, it will not be like this, it may, uh, this is much, it 
ちるかな。So it may do this or it may do like this. So it may be in both the directions, positive or negative. We don't know. It all depends on uh, design. Uh, so, so if this is your delta v out, and let's say my voltage here is, I'm going from 2.5 volt to 3.5 volt. So, which is one volt actually? The simplicity I wanted to keep the difference one volt. So, line regulation is nothing but delta e v out over one volt. And if this is let's say again, I can say ten millivolt, then I can say ten millivolt per volt. Okay, just like in this case, if I assume this is ten millivolt and this is one amp, then this becomes ten millivolt per amp. So that's it. Uh, line regulation. So okay. So next performance parameter is. line transient so if this is my input supply voltage which is not uh, which is not fixed but changing so let's say this is your v in and it's going from 1.5 volt to 1.8 volt now let's say my output is regulated at 1.2 volt constant so this is my v out which is 1.2 volt so this is your uh, regulator i will just uh, take a uh, take an example of uh, this linear regulator and this is my load or let me draw current here this this is my i load and this is your v in this is your v ref which is let's say 1.2 volt so v out is also one point two volt so what would happen actually when v in changes so this pass transistor which is mp it will create a vgs difference because this gate voltage cannot change instantaneously so the current in the output will increase and this will try to shoot and then since it's a feedback system the feedback will try to recover and the recovery time will be depending on your bandwidth and since it it has a finite uh, finite uh, bandwidth so this gate voltage cannot instantaneously change so depending upon how fast your loop is this overshoot will be determined and then it will come back and then again we will start regulating at 1.2 volt now same thing will happen when it goes from 1.8 to 1.5 volt now we are reducing so output voltage has to reduce so this will this will go low and then try to recover okay. so you will see a transient here undershoot and overshoot so uh, if i call it this let's say this is delta v uv under voltage and this is let me move this one point two. So 
so I'll call this guy delta V OV over voltage. So most of this, uh, most of the systems have uh, specification for your uh, regulated output voltage. So uh, I mean most of the system can afford plus minus 10 percent variation, but then that 10 percent includes everything your error, your line transient, load transient. So, this uh, spec for uh, usually transient uh, it is defined within um, 5 percent or less. So, that you keep the rest 5 percent margin for uh, other errors. And uh, when I say uh, this 5 percent spec for this delta V O V and delta U V should be less than. 5 percent of V out. Okay. So, which means for 1.2 volt, so this uh, this is your we call it undershoot and uh, this is your overshoot. So, for 1.2 volt delta V O V and delta V U V should be less than 60 milli volt. Okay. So, which means your output should not be more than 1.26 volt and should not go below 1.14 volt. So, next one is your load transient. Yeah, anyway. So, then uh, other than this undershoot overshoot, we have one more transient spec called settling time. Which means settling this is defined as time after transient is applied when V out settles within 1 percent okay, of the desired voltage. So, which means if I we can roughly say this is your T set. Okay. So, next one is your load transient. So, it is similar to your line transient, the difference is instead of changing V in, we change load here. So, this is my I load. So, the let us say this is going from 0 to 1 amp. Okay. So, what would happen if this is my V out again let us say 1.2 volt then when you apply the load current what would happen your output is regulated and there is no load current or very you can say very small load current maybe order of milliamp or micro amp. So, all of a sudden when you apply the uh, load current, this MOSFET MP has to basically increase the current in order to hold the output voltage, but due to limited bandwidth again the same problem will happen that current cannot change suddenly and so 
which means all the load current for a very short duration or the duration for which your loop recovers uh, the all the current will be supplied by your capacitor and capacitor will start discharging and then recover back again and same thing will happen when you release the load when you release the load means the all the mosfet current will get dumped into the capacitor and it will cause overshoot so again the undershoot overshoot is similar to what we have the delta vov and delta uv and t settling is the uh, t set is the settling time here so this undershoot overshoot obviously in both the cases will depend on the bandwidth and value of the output capacitor you put so if i want to reduce let's say uh, once uh, my bandwidth is set i want to further reduce then only way is to increase the output cap another thing uh, we need to uh, remember in both uh, line transient and load transient is uh, this undershoot overshoot will also depend on how fast you change the input or or load current so let's say i am changing this 1.5 volt to 1.5 volt to 1.8 volt in let's say 10 nanosecond so that's a very fast change ah huh? my bandwidth cannot respond this or this feedback loop cannot respond that fast but let's say i make this change in order of 10 microsecond or so let's say so this change is very slow and this uh, feedback will track because it's not very fast and you will hardly see any undershoot overshoot in the output so it all depends how fast you are changing so if your change is uh, comparable to your bandwidth or slower than your bandwidth then this undershoot will be very small but if you make that change very fast which is much faster than your bandwidth then this undershoot overshoot will be significant and then in that case it can only be reduced by increasing the capacitor or increasing the uh, bandwidth but once you have designed your regulator it's fixed there is no way but only to increase the capacitor okay power supply section ratio so this is defined as psrr equal to change in output voltage delta v out over delta v in so what was this uh, previously we defined delta v out over delta v in line regulation, line regulation. but that was for dc now if you define it for ac then it becomes psrr you can write in db 20 log 10 okay so one example could be so let's say take the case of a charger okay battery charger so what what do you have you have 220 volt ac then it goes to your adapter correct then it goes to your dc dc converter so this guy will have ripple okay so this will be rectified voltage you have a capacitor then it will have some ripple in the output and dc dc then output is switching converter again it will have some so this is your 5 volt which goes to your usb then it will also have some ripple so if this is 50 hertz 
they should be 100 hertz okay but this dc dc is switching at much higher frequency maybe 1 megahertz or 500 kilohertz so it will have a higher frequency ripple it may have some portion of this uh, 100 hertz also component but it's a very low frequency your loop can track but when you have a high frequency ripple your loop will not respond to that and that will start appearing at your output okay so anything you are i mean you looked at the line transient uh, you make a sudden change in the line what happens your loop cannot respond that fast and you will see dip or undershoot or overshoot in the output it's only because your loop has limited bandwidth the same will same thing applies here also the only difference is instead of a step now you have a more like a sinusoid ripple but the concept apply uh, remains same huh? if your this frequency component is so high that your loop cannot track then that component will appear in the output of your regulator so now this is your regulator which takes 5 volt and gives you let us say 1.2 volt okay. output this is your V out this is your V in and this is not clean this has some ripple which could be anything like maybe 10 millivolt, 20 millivolt depending upon the converter specifications and the value of the capacitor which is put here. Okay. So, what all can be done to improve this PSRR? Yeah, that may be the one case, but uh, that is not always true. Huh? It depends how you ha have designed your when we will come to the designing the regulator you will know that uh, it is not that output cap will improve the so it depends uh, what is your dominant pole whether the dominant pole is your uh, inside the regulator or the output if your dominant pole is inside the regulator then your bandwidth is limited by the pole not not with the capacitor so increasing the cap may not help here okay until unless you make this dominant if you make the output pole dominant then obviously it will always help okay because uh, you will get a direct filtering from input to output and uh, so it will behave like a low pass filter so making the low pass filter bandwidth lower and lower will reject more higher frequencies and that will help but if you are relying on the bandwidth then larger the bandwidth is so, there are two ways to suppress the uh, ripple one is you just filter it out through the capacitor which is only possible if you make output pole dominant other way you make your it is a feedback system huh? so if, if there is any change in the output your feedback will try to correct it so what what it will do actually when it sees uh, any ripple in the output it will try to change the gate voltage of the fit in such a way that nothing appears across the VJs. Okay, so, so think about this. You have this. This is your R load, and this is your output cap V out. This is your V in, which has some ripple. V ref. Okay. So, what would happen when any change appears here at the V out if I call it V gate your unless your V gate changes if let us say V in is changing unless your V gate changes the whole thing will appear in the output. In fact, let us say if you make the V gate constant what is appearing at the so the voltage which is appearing at the gate is your VGS gate to source voltage and if you assume the small signal of V gate is 0 because it is not changing your bandwidth is very slow it is not changing. So, everything watch uh, the AC all AC component which is appearing at the V in will get amplified by the GM of this and appear at the output. 
so whatever the r out so gm r out is the gain actually so this is looking like your what type of uh, amplifier will this be why common source common gate ah because input is at the source uh, input is at the gate and your source is grounded then it's a common source because common node is gate here because gate is not changing so it will behave like a common gate amplifier and everything will appear here and it will make it even worse because this is acting as an amplifier so what do you want which means i now if i increase the bandwidth in such a way that let's say this guy is 1 uh, 100 kilohertz i am a bandwidth is 1 megahertz or so so which means 100 mega 100 kilohertz can be easily tracked if this is any change in the output what would happen your output will be fed back here and same time it will try to change the gate voltage so let's say this changes by a plus minus 10 millivolt or so so it will try to change the gate voltage by plus minus 10 millivolt so ac ac variation across your gate to source remains zero so if they are in phase and they have a same amplitude they will cancel out so and that's what the feedback does actually but you are limited by the bandwidth okay so you can track up to the bandwidth of your amplifier so if your signal frequency or the ac variation at v in is more than the bandwidth of this amplifier then it cannot track in that case it, some portion will appear at the gate but will be very smaller and th which means it will keep on amplifying and amplifying as you keep increasing the signal frequency and more will appear at the output so it will look like a high pass filter i mean your system will look like a low pass filter but if you look at a psrr it will look like a high pass filter because at lower frequency you will get a rejection but at higher frequency you will not get the rejection but then after that when this guy kicks in this capacitor then you have a additional pole then it will try to attenuate the signal so it will go high and then so it will more look like a band pass kind of a behavior but if you make this output dominant then it will look like a low pass filter perfect which is the desired case but it's not easy when you design the regulator to make the output pole as dominant because most of the case this value of these caps are very small so there is no way unless you put a order of put order of microfarads also and uh, we prefer uh, these on chip regulators not to put any external cap and on chip we can uh, mostly we can put tens of picofarad so you can never make this dominant pole that's a problem okay so there are some techniques uh, where you cancel this you inject the this noise at the gate and you can try to cancel and improve the psrr we'll talk about that when we discuss the design of your linear regulator and this is very important and that's one of the reasons uh, sometimes at the output you need a linear regulator uh, i mean output of switching regulator because switching regulator are noisy they will have ripple in the output and you want to filter that so if you have a noise sensitive application let's say rf or analog and uh, it is driving very high current then you put a dc dc converter followed by a this linear regulator which we call sub regulator and if you keep the dropout very low then you won't lose too much in the efficiency and if your regulator has a very good bandwidth this uh, linear regulator then you can filter out those ripple and output will be much cleaner so instead of 10 millivolt you might see less than 1 millivolt ripple in the output which will be sufficient to supply to your noise sensitive application it could be rf analog or any other application